Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, Deuteronomy chapter 30. And if I were to give this one a title, I love this one so much. I would call it God Prepares a Way Back. God Prepares a Way Back. One of the things I love about the Lord is He knows us. He knows where we're where we're weak. He knows where we're strong. And He knows that we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall off along the way from time to time. And instead of just you know, letting us go. He always prepares, even before he prepares a way back. And we're going to get into that in just a moment, including it has the, the the scripture we've been saying at the end. That's in this chapter, and I'm so excited to talk about it. But as always, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube video. If you are listening to the podcast, you're my favorite. <laughs> make sure you leave us a five-star review. Leave us a comment. It really does help if you take just a moment to do that. And also, if you would love to do this, I'd love you to go to my blog at brandoncannon.com. And I'm working on trying to provide a weekly newsletter where I share with you my favorite chapter that we went through that week, what really stood out to me even more than what I talk about here. And then as I'm constantly searching and looking as a pastor, I'm always preparing messages and I'm talking about different things. And as I come across different things that really just stood out to me, I want to share them with you. And the more I dig, the more we can find, then the more you dig. Hopefully I can find, and that's how we engage with one another. So if you want to go there, subscribe to it. Of course, it's free. It gives us a chance to just enjoy God's word and resources together. Today, Deuteronomy chapter 30, and, and I love this idea because God is calling them back, and they haven't even left yet. <laughs> Moses is finishing up one of his last sermons, and as we've been saying before, Deuteronomy is a Greek word that means second law. And so he is talking to this next generation, and he's saying, man, I can't go with you but I'm going to root for you. I'm going to cheer you on. And I want to tell you everything that's going to make you be successful. And that is trust and obey. It's the only way. And I love how he's just laying it out one after another. And as this, one of the final sermons he is preaching, he is saying in the future, guess what? It's not going to be perfect. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. But the great thing is you can always choose life again. And I love this idea that even before you mess up, God's already prepared a way back. And so that's really helpful for me because I can't tell you how many times, especially on a Sunday, man. Like back when I was a teenager, man, I have a great Sunday, feel God's presence, God's moving in my life. And I'm like, God, boy, I'm never going to get discouraged again. I'm going to deal with my issues. It's going to be great. Well, by the next Sunday, I just hope Jesus still loves me, <laughs> you know. And what I love is that even in those moments, God always provides a way back. So let's just read this together and just enjoy the goodness of God. If you've got your Bibles opened up to Deuteronomy chapter 30, here we go. Verse 1 of the New Living Translation says this, In the future, when you experience all these blessings and curses I have listed for you, and when you are living among the nations to which the Lord your God has exiled you, take heart all these instructions. If at that time you and your children return to the Lord your God, and if you obey with all your heart and all your soul all the commands I have given you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes. He will have mercy on you and gather you back from all the nations where he has scattered you. Even though you are banished to the ends of the earth, the Lord your God will gather you from there and bring you back again. The Lord your God will return you to the land that belonged to your ancestors, and you will possess that land again. Then he will make you even more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors. So he's saying, even if you mess up, don't worry. God is always going to provide a way for you to choose life and come back to him. Verse 6 says this, The Lord your God will change your heart and the hearts of your descendants so that you will love him with all your heart and soul so that you may live. The Lord your God will inflict all of these curses on your enemies and on all those who hate and persecute you. Then you will again obey the Lord and keep all his commands that I am giving you today. The Lord your God will then make you successful in everything you do. He will give you many children and numerous flocks, livestock, and you will, it will cause your fields to produce abundant harvest. For the Lord will again delight in being good to you as he was to your ancestors. The Lord your God will delight in you and you obey his voice. If you obey his voice and keep the commands and decrees written in the book of instruction. And if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Isn't that amazing? He's just saying, man, if you only knew the good things that God wants for you, he wants all these great things for you. 
just do what he says. <laughs> just obey his voice and keep his commands. He's saying, I know you're not always going to. I know. So when you don't, just realize he's never going to stop seeking after you. And there's always going to be a way back. It, it reminds me of how many times, um, and I've told this story before, but when my girls were real little, I always wanted to try to help them understand there was a choice, right? Like, I want you to obey dad, but there is a choice factor here. And it was, I'd lay out for them. There's all these great things that I want to do. I want to, I want to take you and get ice cream. I want to take you to the park. I want to do all these great things. So do your chores and you get to experience <laughs> the blessings of the father, right? But if you don't do these things, there's consequences. And, and it would be just like, of course, like, like one of my daughters, she just would do it. I mean, she would just do it. My other daughter, she would look and think about it, weigh her options, and sometimes she would. <laughs> but here's the thing that, that I had to learn the hard way is sometimes I would just be so disappointed because in my mind, it was just so simple to me, right? Like, just do the things. Because like, I mean, when they were little, it was just make your bed. That's all I want. <laughs> A happy father is just making your bed. And they wouldn't do it. And so when I would go in there and I would see them and they're facing their consequences, you know, maybe having to just stay in their room or whatever. And I would just, I'd be so disappointed. And I would tell them I was disappointed. And that's like it made it worse. And so one of the things I had to learn the hard way is even in the moment of where they're being punished to remind them that good days are still coming. It's like, hey, babe, it's okay. I know you're having to experience this punishment and I know it's not good, but it's going to be okay. You're going to get out of here in a few minutes and we're going to get a chance to do it all over again. And that's exactly what God is doing is even when we fall, he's saying good days are coming because that's how much I love you. Let's finish this up. Verse 11 says this, this command I'm giving you today is not too difficult for you and it is not beyond your reach. It is not kept in heaven so distant that you must ask who will go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear it and obey. It is not kept beyond the sea so far away that you must ask who will cross the sea and bring it to us so we can hear it and obey. No, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and it is in your heart so that you may obey it. Isn't that amazing? Verse 15. Now listen. Today I am giving you the choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and keep his commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply in the Lord your God, and the Lord your God will bless you and the land you are about to enter and occupy. But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long a good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Here he goes. And notice he says in verse 11, he said, this is not too hard. It takes effort, but it's not too hard. And this is what he said. Verse 19, today I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. So it's like, everybody's staring at you, my bro. Do it right. Here it is. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants may live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and committing yourself firmly to Him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's saying, I'm giving you the choice between life or death. Choose life. But you notice what he said, if you don't choose life, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> it's going to be bad. But even then, even when you get like just, ugh, and you are scattered, I'm still going to provide a way back. That's the, what I love about God so much. And I just want to encourage you with this as we get ready to end. This is just a powerful, powerful scripture. And he's saying, it's not too hard. I know it seems too hard. I know it just seems difficult. And, and honestly, depending on what season of life you're in, that may seem silly. Because if you're doing well and you're not being tempted and you're not going through a season of testing in your life, then you're like, well, of course, choose life. But it's hard when life is hard, when temptations are oh plenty, <laughs> and testings are erware, <laughs> and everything's going crazy. That's when it's so hard. But what I love about it is he's saying, but it's not impossible. Choose life. And here's the encouragement. God is not a God of the first chance. He's the God of the second chance. 
and the third chance and the fourth chance and the fifth chance and all this. And even the book of Proverbs says, a, though a righteous man may fall seven times, he gets back up again. God is not as interested in how many times you fall. He's interested in how many times you get back up again. And that's why I love about this chapter is there's all these things. He's like, if you fall, I'm not going to give up. If you fall, I'm always going to provide a way back. But today I give you the choice. And it's almost like you can see Moses. It's like he's talking before the assembly. And like in my, in my mind, I'm just using my imagination. It's like he's on his hands and knees. And he's like, please, <laughs> please choose life. Because you got to think, this is the guy who saw God face to face. That he saw God in such a way that when he would leave the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, that his face would glow. And they had to put a veil over his face because he was creeping everybody out. It's this guy who was like, if you could just see what I see. If you could have just heard his voice the way I can hear it. If you just knew what I know, you would choose life every day. And can I tell you, we need to choose life. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Everything you are looking for, everything we strive for in life, acceptance, wholeness, security, all those things is found in God. Let's pray about that today. Father, thank you so much that you give us the choice between life or death. And you tell us it's hard, but it is possible. I pray God today when we have the choice between life or death, between choosing you or choosing another way, we'll choose life and that that life will lead to more life. And the more we see you, the more we'll want to see. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God's word says, as we just read it, Deuteronomy 30, today I've given you the choice between life and death. Say it with me. Choose life. You can make that choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. My choice is today, all of us will choose life. I'll see you tomorrow for Deuteronomy 31.